all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's take a look at problem 10-1A, a nice problem to illustrate what we mean by flexible budgets. So the Greatest Friends is a dog rescue group that specializes in finding homes for great, the Great Dane breed. The company produces the following cost report for June, and there is uh, their cost variance report for June. Number of dogs in care, 10, actual 4. Grooming costs were lower than budgeted. Dog food costs were lower than budgeted. Cleaning supplies were lower than budgeted. All the costs were lower than budgeted. Salaries were slightly higher than budgeted, but overall, boy, oh boy, we are doing very well. Very favorable var uh, variants. Valerie Pringle, the manager of the rescue group, comments on the report. I'm certainly proud of this cost report. It shows that I'm not only doing a great job caring for animals in our care, I'm also keeping costs under control. And so the first, uh, question says comment on the major flaw in the report above and i hope it glared out at you it certainly glares out at me uh the thing that's glaring about this report is look of course our costs are going to be down we only had four dogs we planned to have 10 so of course our costs are going to be way lower than what we expected and i think you know if if um you know, if you're doing a job and you only have 40% of the customers or 40% of the work, of course your costs should be lower. So I think, and, and definitely what, what the question is asking is, we should prepare a revised report. We should say, look, if we had only known we were going to have four dogs, kind of rewind time and say, okay, let's pretend we had to redo this budget, but only at the actual level of activity. So in this case, obviously the number of dogs in care is what's going to really uh, cause these costs to fluctuate, grooming, dog food, and cleaning supplies. Um, so uh, let's pretend we only had four dogs and make a new budget at that level and see how efficient we were. So how do I do that? Well, here's how. I'm going to scroll down and kind of get a more zoomed version of our budget. And I'm going to add two columns here, one for formula and one for which I'll call flex. Ooh, easy for me to spell. Budget. So the formula for uh, column, I ignore everything over here. I know I'm scratching that out. I'm going to erase my scratching out in a second. I just ignore this. Uh, for formula, all I do is I look at my budget and I look at my variable costs and I say, okay, grooming is $2,000 based on 10 dogs. So what's the cost per dog? Because this is going to vary with dogs, right? If I have more dogs, my grooming cost should go up. If I have fewer dogs, my grooming cost should go down. That's what makes it a variable cost. Well, the, the variable cost per dog is 200 bucks per dog. Dog food costs 10,000 bucks divided by 10 dogs means the dog food cost is a thousand bucks per dog. <laughs> Sir, dogs that are apparently eating very fancy. Uh, cleaning supplies, 500 bucks a dog, uh, 500 bucks for 10 dogs. That means it's $50 in cleaning supplies per dog. My overall costs per dog then, 12,500 divided by 10 is $1,250 per dog. I don't do this calculation for fixed cost. Why? Because they're fixed. I don't look at salaries on a per dog basis. Salaries are fixed. Property taxes, doesn't matter if I have five dogs, 10 dogs, or 20 dogs, my property taxes are going to be the same. So I only look at this formula for my variable costs. Well, now let's prepare the flexible budget as promised. And all we do is we redo the budget, but we say, okay, let's pretend we had four dogs when we made up the budget, right? Let's pretend we didn't know we were gonna have, how many dogs we were gonna have, but let's pretend we budgeted at four. Again, we ignore our actuals. We don't even look at our actuals. So I say to myself, the only actual we look at is the number four, 
right? Like that number drove our budget, but beyond that, we never look at actuals uh, for this part. We just say, okay, if I were budgeting based on four, well, here's my budget based on 10. What would my budget based on four look like? Obviously about 40% the size, but I'll do it the the uh, using the formula. So four dogs times 200 bucks a dog, I would say grooming should cost me 800 bucks. Uh, four dogs times a thousand bucks for dog food, that's four thousand bucks. Four dogs times 50 bucks a dog for cleaning supplies, that's two hundred dollars. So my cost here should be five thousand dollars. Is that right? Eight hundred plus two hundred plus four thousand. Yeah, that looks like uh, five thousand dollars to me. My salaries, well, if they're fixed doesn't matter how many dogs, my salary should be 1500 bucks. And if property taxes are truly fixed, doesn't matter how many dogs there are, this should be 400 bucks, bringing me to 1900, not 19,000, 1900, and bringing my total cost of operations to 6,900. So if I knew I was only going to have, I shouldn't have put dollar signs on each of these, If I knew I was only going to have uh, four dogs under my care, I, I should have budgeted, I would have budgeted for $6,900 in uh, costs. Now let's compare this to my actual and let's figure out the variance. So um, my grooming should have cost me 800, it actually cost me 1300. My variance here is 500, unfavorable. I overspent by $500. My dog food should have cost four grand, it actually cost me 6,500. I'm off by 2,500, this is an unfavorable variance. Uh, 200 versus 400, again, 200 unfavorable. I am, let's see, $3,200 unfavorable here. I've overspent by 3,200. Comparing salaries to actual, 1500 Now again, I ignore this old static budget column. I'm not using it any longer. Uh, my flex budget, I'm, I'm, I've got 1500 in uh, salaries. My actual is 1600 I am 100 unfavorable. I spent too much on salary. My property taxes, no uh, variance there. So overall, in terms of fixed uh, costs, I am 100 unfavorable. So 100 unfavorable combined with 3,200 unfavorable gives us $3,300 unfavorable budget. So this person that was kind of tooting her own horn, Valerie Pringles was saying, hey, look, I'm doing so well because, again, looking at this, I spent $4,200 less than what was budgeted. Well, if you had way fewer dogs under your care at this dog rescue group, of course you were gonna it was gonna cost you less in dog food right like you shouldn't be bragging oh i spent less on dog food like you had fewer dogs of course right and so uh, it's just logical and if you actually run the numbers uh this appeared to be a very inefficient operation uh under her management uh so comment on pringle's assertion that she's doing a great job keeping costs under control i would say she is not uh, you know, I would be concerned if we were running at capacity that we would be way over budget. Just the fact that we had so few dogs uh, really saved her in terms of cost control. Although it also begs the question, why can't we get more dogs? You know, maybe Great Danes are a, a, a rare breed and maybe they're just hard to find and, and we don't have as many as we planned on. Um, so that could be it. It could be something totally out of her control. But if you know, part of the problem here is we're a Great Dane Rescue. We want to be, we have the facility to handle at least 10 dogs. Why are we only handling four? And of course our, our um, costs are down if we only have 40% of the dogs under our care that we had anticipated. Okay, that's it for our first flexible budget experience. Stay tuned for the next video.